So Zobel, what drew you to Martin French's work? Martin French's is, is, his work is, is really interesting. It's everything I love about like this gestural quality. It has a tremendous amount of movement to it. There's some like details to it, but a lot of times it's really loose. The coloring is really loose. It plays with like a 1920s, 30s style, but yet modern. The color is subtle, but vibrant. There's, anytime I look at his work, I'm just like, I have to smile. It's just so friendly and so inviting, but at the same time, there's a lot of like edge to it. You know, a lot of people, when they say like edgy, it, it feels like angry or it feels like aggressive, but this, this is like edgy in the most happy way. How is he gaining all of that movement? Like you can look at it instinctually and you can feel that these things are in the process of moving, even though it's a still image. How do you go about capturing that movement? Yeah, so for example, we're gonna look at the two Harlem, Harlem ones just as the first example. So, you know, th this guy sitting there, one, his posture is this like bizarre posture. He's totally leaning back. He's balancing all on one foot. That alone has a lot of movement. And not only that, you're seeing the lines, no line is perfect in like a 2D class or, or, or basic intro class, we talk about line quality a lot. And the idea that these lines are unfinished gets this jittery feeling to it. And not only that, you have some unfinished pieces, right? So if you're looking at like his back foot is just kind of like scribbled in, that adds movement and depth. The way that the type is arranged around this, the H is sideways. And then we have the A and the R looks like it's a cutout from another one. So that feels like that was has some movement. And then we're getting all these other pieces on the right-hand side, which seems irrelevant, but play so perfectly into this, where they mimic the polka dots, they mimic the color that's already in it. So you're moving from that H all the way to the A to the R, you're seeing these lines, you're seeing the dots, you see the dots on the pants, you go, oh, there's dots on the pants, and where does that lead you? To the E, and then you see his foot, his foot's on this block, and where is that next to? Oh, the M. And then you're just completely moving around by all these really super simple gestures and simple things. But then it's so smart in the way that it keeps you in the composition with this black line that goes down the right hand side, these different color blocks that are sitting in the background. You have a dark gray, you have a lighter one that are keeping us in frame. And I think the most important thing with this, you feel like the guy is floating without it, is this block that the shoe is on. And that block seems irrelevant until you notice that it's there's type in there. And then you're down by the smaller type down there and it's genius. And it really moves you through, right? So if we look at the other Harlem one, right? The one with this, with the lady dancing. So not only is the shape of uh, the woman in some movement, right? The way that it's posed, but look at the lines on the dress, right? The lines on the dress are super scribbly. So it feels like that dress is moving. And again, we have that back foot that is not fully defined, giving us some depth and some movement. And again, the same principles that we looked in the other one are happening. Her foot is on that like black shape that's there that brings us all the way down and gives that figure a ground. When you first visually see it, the impact, a lot of it is in like the color and the colored shapes. So the fact that most of the movement is getting subconsciously absorbed through the line work is really interesting. Yeah, and, and you know, the way that he's using coloring is so great. It's like the ones that you really want us to pay attention to are the ones in the most vibrant color or mm -hmm. the ones that you want us to center around, right? So if we look at the one that I was just talking about with the woman in Harlem, you notice the A is red. Why would the A be red? And that's the only letter that's red. Well, the background is red. There's that like red orangey stripe going down the back. So that pulls us connection between those two and what else do you notice that's in that same color the shoe and where's the shoe at the bottom so those three pieces are centering us around this movement all those things are combined to just form this perfect like arc that just has you wiggle through the piece and the typography in this is so integral into the piece it is not separate from the piece it really is part of the artwork yeah I think if the type was just like this super straight type, it would feel off from what this is. But the fact, especially in these Harlem pieces, the fact that the letters are different, the fact that some have backgrounds, the fact that some are sideways, the fact that some look like they're cut out, really make this piece happen because it feels like this chaotic nature that is what is happening inside of the 
images. So all of a sudden, if you have this like really boring type, it's almost like, well, why have the type there at, there at all? Like it's, then it's irrelevant almost, right? You have this like super fun, it's going here and then you just, and you just have this type and it's like, well, oh wait, now it's fighting with this. It's like, you have to have the type kind of uh, play with it. And, and so those pieces are, are, the type is really integral um, to what's happening. And I think so far, this is one of the artists that are more like if you took away the type and the product behind the the poster, you would more, it is more recognizable as like the classic definition of art because of the way the figure has been made. But then just adding just a little bit of type, which is so integral to the piece and itself has made it graphic design. And so it's such an interesting line that 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 would cross and sometimes people as soon as you cross into graphic design it's somehow not art anymore when if you just took away a couple letters they would be like oh that's an art piece it's an illustrative art piece right and 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 we look at art and we look at design and we feel like they're like these these entities that that live so far apart and the way that i preach graphic design the way i talk about graphic design is usually you know as soon as you add type to it it can be this graphic design piece but there's also intent behind the typography, right? So this is a poster about Coltrane. Now, is it an event? Is it just about Coltrane itself? But then it becomes a poster and less just about artwork and more about having the celebration of Coltrane. Is it the idea of showcasing Harlem? Is it the idea of talking about the trailblazer? Like it becomes this not sellable point, but a message. Anytime there becomes this extra piece that's beyond just art for art's sake, that's where graphic design straddles. And sometimes it can get blurry. Like to me, this is right on that line of, is it just an art piece or is there this graphic design element to it? And I think, I mean, why can't it also be both? Like, why can't it be art and have some design element? Like, as I said in previous ones, like graphic design should be hung. Like it should be so interesting that you want to frame it and hang it. This is a piece and all the pieces we've talked about are pieces that I would hang up and frame and put up for various different reasons. They were all very different, but had the same power of this idea that it, it it's a standalone that's visually powerful. 